Hi, George here. And this is the number one most popular topic from my Photoshop Elements videos over on the old channel. So I'm doing one here on the new channel, get things going. And that's to make a transparent background just like that. Now, very easy to do. Standard technique that I use in lots of my videos. And it allows you to do such things as changing the background. We can take this background over here, add this in, and put our dog in a new scene just like that just by removing that background. Okay, to do this, the first thing we need to do is to get our two pictures. This is the foreground picture, which is right here, and our background picture. And I got both of these over at Pixabay, my favorite place to go for getting free content. So let's take a look at that. And this right here is just pixabay.com. And I have two pictures here. The first one is this background. And I'll put this link in the description so you can just click on the link and come right to this page. Now I have an account over here, but the accounts are free. There's no cost to download these things. It just saves you a little bit of time with the accounts. So I recommend getting an account. And then simply go over here, click on download. And the size that I use is always one that has 1920 in there. So this is 1920 by 1279. This is basically the Photoshop Elements four by six inch size. So that's why I use that one, just download. I have a folder that I just called projects and I just download these things down there. This is a temporary place while I'm working on my images. I'll then sort those away later on once I'm done with the project. Okay, so we'll download that one. And then you also want to download this one here. Again, same thing. I'll put this link in the description. And on the download this time, that's when you want, notice that there's the 1920 part. That's the about six inches. So that's the one that you want to get right there. Okay, so I already have mine downloaded and opened up in the program. Let me show you how to open that just in case you're brand new to Photoshop Elements. It's easy to do. You just go up here to File, click on Open, and this is my Projects folder. Then click on your image there and hit Open. All there is to it. Okay, we're now set to go. One thing I just want to point out very quickly here, normally the tool options is showing down below here, but you do have a photo bin bottom left-hand corner, and that shows you all of your open images right down in there. Now we're going to be getting rid of this one. I'll just delete this image out of here. We'll be building that during this discussion. We don't need this right now. We're gonna be starting off with this image here. And I'll take this back to the original just by deleting my working copy up there. And we'll just delete and delete. There we go. And now that's back just like the original image. Okay, before we get into the actual project in here, I just want to remind you that the best way to learn how to work with Photoshop Elements is with my complete training course. And I have a link for that in the description is right down there. And also with this brand new channel, I'm not gonna be getting any support here, any money here from YouTube for a few months. So at the moment, this video is 100% fan supported. We can't do thanks yet on this channel. I don't have access to that yet. As soon as I do, I will begin to mention that. But you can, if you haven't already purchased my training, you can get the training and that really does help support this channel and keep this channel going. So check out that link in the description to get your copy of my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. All right, let's go ahead and work on this one. We need to make a selection around this. There are two basic ways to do that. If you have a later version of Photoshop Elements, then all you have to do is go up here to Select, come down here to Subject, and then Photoshop Elements goes in and finds the image, and right there, it makes that selection for you. It's actually very fast, as you can see, very easy to do. It's one of the reasons to get a more current or modern version here of Photoshop Elements is for the Subject Select. It can save you a lot of time. Now, if you don't have that, I'll just use the control D keyboard shortcut to deselect that. Then we'll have to manually select this. It's also fairly easy. It doesn't take that long to do. It's just a few more steps. Once we get the selection made, we'll then refine the edge and that step is the same either way. It doesn't matter which way you make your selection, use your favorite technique and we'll get into the refined edge in just a second. But let's make this selection here the way that you would be doing it if you don't have the subject select in your copy of Photoshop Elements. And what I normally do for this is just grab the lasso tool up here Make sure you're on a new selection right here. I have my feathering at one pixel usually. And we also can zoom in here, make it just a bit easier like that. You're not gonna be getting all those really thin hairs. Those are just gonna disappear. No way to keep all of that stuff. It's just too fine for Photoshop elements to, to work with, but we'll get a lot of this. And then take your selection tool right here and just begin making a selection right around here. So just a little ways away. We'll use the refine edge to come in and make that a much better selection as a second step. Okay, hold the space bar down. You can then pull your image like that and continue up around. 
in his workaround. If you happen to go into the image, that's okay, but try to stay just a little ways out when you're using this technique. This is real fast, easy to do, and my usual way of doing this, I'll use this subject select if I think there's good separation between the foreground and the background. There is on this one, so I'd use subject select on that. But again, if you don't have it, then this way it works out just as well once we get past that first step. Okay, we'll just go clear on the bottom down here and right around that paw at the bottom. There we go. Now, when you're using this lasso tool, make sure you do not let go of that mouse button. If you let go of the mouse button, then the selection is going to collapse back on itself and you'll have to start over again or you have to go back and add in the part that didn't get caught. Now, the part in here between the legs may or may not come in. You'll probably have to fix that Later on, a third step I do on my selections is to clean things up on the layer mask level. So the first step is making your basic selection. That's what we're doing right now. Second step is using the refine edge tool. And then the final step is cleaning up the selection on the layer mask. So it's a three part process. Okay, let's go back over the beginning. There we go, there's our selection. I use the control zero keyboard shortcut to go back to fit screen. And at this point, it doesn't matter which technique you used, either this technique or the subject select, either one works, we get to this point. From here on out, it's exactly the same either way. Click on Refine Edge. Brings up our Refine Edge tool, which is right here. Now the normal size for the brush is 35 pixels. You can see it right down there, bottom left-hand corner. And for this, that's pretty good. You can see it right there, and that's a good size. Now, depending upon your image, you may want to come in and do some adjustments in here. If you had a harder edge, then bringing your contrast up can help. A softer edge like this, then I recommend keeping your contrast clear to the bottom for the best effect. So don't use any contrast, don't use any feathering or smoothing. All of these things will tend to make the edges harder and you won't get some of that fur effect in there. So just keep these things all the way to the left when you're doing fur. Also, same thing applies if you're doing hair. So if you have a harder edge, then using those can give you a bit of a better edge. Now I like doing this on just a few passes. Come in here and just do a little bit like that. Let go, let Photoshop Elements think about it and do its adjustments in there. And what it's doing is, is coming in, looking at the area that we just selected and then trying to find a better edge for us. So it does the hard work for us. Okay, here we go and let's get up in here. Now this area will probably need to be fixed. We'll have to check that. Yeah, that's that will need some fixing in there. That's okay, we can do that. That often happens when you have a closed area like that. And just work your way all around. And take your time on this. Don't be in a big hurry. The basic selection, this is the most important part of the whole project. Once this is done, everything else is easy. And everything else can be easily adjusted. But here's where you want to take your time and do a good job for the best possible outcome. Okay, I'll just come right down around here. I'm just following this around. And now to finish off the top part of the dog up here, get this side and this ear right around there. And we'll get the second ear over here, the dog's left ear. And we'll bring this right back around to the beginning again. And there we go. Now, where you go from here depends upon what you need to do, what you want to be doing. Sometimes I'll go for a selection if that's what I need. In this case, what I want to do is go to a new layer with a layer mask. That does two things for us. First, it gives us our layer with a layer mask, but second, it gives us a new layer. So the background layer is not touched and that then becomes a safety layer. So I click on this, choose okay. There you go. There's our background that's untouched. So in case we mess things up later on, I can come back and use this one to continue. Here's our copy up here with our new layer mask. Now notice that we have our transparency in there. That's where the layer mask is black. We have our dog, that's layer mask is white. And if I zoom in, we're going to be seeing some areas that need to be fixed. The way the refined edge works is it comes in and gives you a very soft edge. You can see it right here. And they do that so it will blend into your new background. So don't worry about it being too soft, that's okay. But up here where it looks like it should be a little bit harder, we can fix that and just kind of soften that down. So I'll leave anything that has some hairs sticking out, I'll, I'll leave those alone. But I'll come in here and just clean up some of this stuff, maybe down around this edge here just a bit. Now for that, we'll be painting onto the Layer mask, I'll click on the layer mask side, look for the light blue outline. Let's go over to our paintbrush. And you want black, I want to be hiding. 
We're going to do our brush down here, and you want to have a soft edge brush. So let's come down to a soft edge brush. So get 45, it's a little bit large, 35, that looks pretty good. You can see it right there. There's the brush size right there. Now we just paint black right on this edge, and I'll just come in close. I'm not going to come right against the edge, but I'll come in close. And notice I have my opacity down about halfway. That way I can come in and make a few passes and not get too much done. I just want to thin the edge out just a little bit in here, make it a little bit softer. And that will help to blend things in. Right in here, just a touch, a couple taps in there. But I'm trying to get rid of some of that gray edge, that gray effect. And that comes in because we had that kind of white gray background. Now to make this work out the best possible way, you want to try to have a background that's similar to your original background, at least similar colors and values, then any little bit of edge showing will blend into your new background. Okay, that's all looking pretty good. Right here you can see it's just a bit much coming in here, so I'll just bring this in just a little bit. And right there I missed that, I'll take that out, take that out, and bring this in a little bit. We also can come back and do more of this later. This is why I like using the technique of making a layer mask. I can put this onto the new image, and if it works, great. If it needs adjustments, I can go back and adjust that. If you come in and just cut the image out, and do it that way, you know, erase out the old background, you can't go back and adjust it later, so you're limiting yourself there. So being able to come back and adjust is a much better approach to this. And just work around the whole thing. Look for those areas that maybe are a bit showing like right in here, just a little bit in there. You can see right here just a bit. Just take those out. And I'm using this at about halfway on the opacity so it's not coming in too hard, too fast. And that will help blend this into our other image. Okay, right down in here, almost to the back. The dog is also running, so a little bit of blurring effect on the dog, and that's fine. Okay, now in here, I'm going to bring my brush size way down. Use your slider control right there, and let's get this way down to about five. No, eight, eight's pretty good. It's a real small brush. So I can come in here and take out this middle section. Using a small brush like this does take longer, but it's the only really safe way to do little in between areas in here. So take your time, work around, and I like to go around the edges like this, and then I'll come back and clean out that middle section once I have my edges done. A bit of fur right in here, and I think right about there is good. Bring it right around over here. Okay, now that the edge is done, I can then more easily come in and just do several shots right down the middle here and clean that middle section out very easily without having to worry about doing the edges. And you know, let's paint that out. I can also go a little bit larger. This is my right square bracket key for a larger brush. Using the keyboard shortcuts for brush size, left square bracket and right square bracket is a great time saver. Okay, it's a little bit right up in here. There's the left square bracket, bring the brush size down again. And let's just take this out right in there, just a little bit. And that should take care of our fixes. Okay, control zero, fit screen again. And there we go, there is our basic dog. We're all set to go. Now, I'll be floating this window. Pull that down and float the window. If you don't have floating windows enabled, then go up here to Edit. Come down to Preferences and General, and it's right there, Allow Floating Documents in Expert Mode. Make sure that's checked. You can then float your window. And the reason for that is all I have to do here is just grab this layer up here, drag it on top of there, and there's the dog. I'll just minimize that. Now, a dog is too big, as you can see, although that's kind of fun. You may want to go real large. It's more dramatic, but I want a bit more realistic. Now, if you pull it down a little bit, you can see up here, here's a control handle right there. There's also one over here, left-hand side. Grab one of those and pull that in, and make the dog smaller. So choose the size you want. This is bigger than I did before, but I'm kind of liking that size. I'm liking this bigger dog in here, but I think I'll leave this larger than I did last time. Choose OK, bring that in. Now we have some problems in here with our contrast and with the basic color value. There's a lot of warmth in the ground down here, a lot of this yellowy sand, a lot of warm colors. It's blue up there, but there's a lot of warmth down here. The dog is very cool. You can tell by the white area in here because it was on a cool image, cool background. Also, it's lower in contrast. 
Now to judge your contrast, look at the white areas in your background picture. And that's right up in here in the cloud. That's pretty bright. And look at your dark areas. So I have some dark right over here in this bush. I want to bring the dark values of the dog down to be close to the dark areas in your image. I have a little bit right down here, but I can take it further. And you want to bring your light areas, the white areas, up to about the same level as any white area in your picture. Unless you're in shade, in which case this would be fine for in shade. Now just notice that I'm not seeing my images up here on my layer. That sometimes happens. And the solution there is to close your image down, open it back up again. So I'm going to save this. It needs to be saved anyway. I'll just do a save as, file, save as. This is my projects folder. I'll just call this one dog beach. There we go, it's now saved. I can then close that, minimize that. There we are. Back up to file, come down to recently opened. There's a dog beach. And let's dock that again. And we're now seeing the thumbnails. That's correct. Okay, let's grab our zoom tool and fit screen. And let's now take care of that contrast. Now for this, we'll be using an adjustment layer. Go up here to layer, come down to new adjustment layer. And the one you want is levels. Where it says use previous layer, make sure you check that. That's going to limit the adjustment to just this one layer, just the dog layer. Choose OK. And there's our control. Now you can see up here in the layers that the adjustment layer is indented. The thumbnails are indented a little bit. That lets you know that this is only going to be applied to this one layer. So we'll be doing the dog and not doing the background. Now I know I want to have the darks a bit darker. Darks is your left hand side. We'll pull that in a little bit. Just richen those darks down just a touch. You can see the real darks are right up in here. I don't want to go that far. It gets kind of blocky. But bring them in just a little bit like that. And also want to bring the lights up. That's the right hand side. Bring that in a little bit. And it's a bit of a balancing in here, balancing match. And I think that's looking pretty good. And you can adjust your midtones in here if you want to. I'm going to pull the midtones down just a little bit and pull that right side in a bit more. And that looks pretty good to me. I think I'm okay with that. I'm seeing a little bit of a light halo around a couple spots in here on the ears, right down here. Just a little bit of white halo and a little bit of gray showing in down here. So I want to take care of those spots and that's being done on the layer mask. So let's just close this down and I'll zoom in on this left side. I can really see it here. I won't do the whole picture. That'll just take too long on the video, but I'll show you the technique. Go here to the layer mask. And come over here and you want this tool right here. It's the burn tool. You come down to the options. It's that one right there. You may see this kind of a like dark magnifying glass thing. And that's the dodge tool. What you want is this hand. So you're going to circle that's your burn tool. Normally you want the midtones selected. And you can see that my brush is right here. And then just brush over the edge like that. And notice how it darkens down that edge of the layer mask. It makes it more contrasty. And that usually will get rid of any of that little bit of a halo they may have showing in there. Now this was on a very light background. This dog was on snow, so we've got a lot of that halo in there. I can leave a little bit. That's kind of natural for a bright light. But I want to get rid of most of the halo. If you hold the space bar down, you can move the whole image. And this technique will usually take care of this. Now if it doesn't, if it's too much, then you may have to go back in and darken that down on the image side of your layer. And for that, you just go over here to the image side, double click, look for your light blue outline, and do the same trick on the image side like this. And you can then darken down the actual image. And that should get rid of any rest of that little bit of halo. You can see right up in here. Those spots that are white, I can darken those down so they're no longer white. And that fixes that. So combination of those two techniques, either doing this on the layer mask or doing this on the actual image side, put those two together and you can get a real super nice edge. Look like how nice that edge looks. Looks just about perfect. Okay, same thing. Let's go over here to the layer mask side, double click, and then I'll come right down here, do that first. And then the image side, double click, and a little bit on the image side. Darken that down, and there we go. Absolutely perfect edge on that. Okay, I'm not going to bother doing the whole dog right now. I'll do that later. And I would then go ahead and do that clear around all the edges and make sure they're all perfect. But the head now is looking exactly how I want it. Coloration is looking pretty good. I like that. Now you can go back up to your adjustment layer right here. 
double click on that icon, brings your controls back up again so you can always come back and fine tune things to get it exactly where you want. Now I've added a lot of contrast here into the dog, which looks better with the image, but it also is making the image look a little low contrast. So let's do an adjustment layer on the background as well. Come down to our background layer. Go up here to layer, adjustment layer, same thing, levels. Check that checkbox, choose OK. And I'll pull the left side in just a little bit like that and the right side in just a little bit, adding just a little bit more contrast. And I think that looks better. Okay, now we have the blue tint in here. He's kind of bluish. Everything around him is very warm color. So let's take care of that bluishness. So we'll go back up here. Now notice I've lost those layers again, the thumbnails up here. Easy to fix. I'm just going to first save this, file and save. There we go, and save. Now I have a shortcut for that. I have a Corsair mouse, it's a gaming mouse, and it has additional buttons on the mouse. And this one's kind of nice, so it's a button for my left thumb that I have set up to do Control S, which is your keyboard shortcut for save. So I put that as a button on my mouse, it makes it real fast to save. You can either use that or the Control S keyboard shortcut, if you don't have a fancy mouse like that, or just the file and save right there. Okay, that's saved, let's close it. Open it back up again, recent files, there we go. There's our thumbnails again. It's a little glitch that sometimes shows up here inside of Photoshop Elements. It doesn't always show up, but it does sometimes. Okay, let's take care of our coloration in here now. So we're on that layer. We'll go up here to layer, come down to adjustment layers. And you want photo filter right in here. Again, same thing, make sure it's checked. It should be because we're on a layer that already has one. And the first option here is the warming filter. And that just happens to be the one that we want. It warms things up. Let me hide that as without. Notice down here it's kind of bluish. And here is with. It's more of an orangey or yellowy. And that's all we need just to bring him back into a better color tone for all the warmness around him. And there are lots of options on that. We bring that back up again. Double click on the thumbnail. I can adjust how much of that I'm doing in here. Or we can choose different warming filters. Here's an LBA warming. It's just slightly different orange. 81, a little bit different orange, a little more yellow on this one, but I think the first one here is the correct option for this image. There we go. And it finishes the picture. Of course, I need to go back in still and finish cleaning up my edges, which I'll do once I finish this video. And if you liked this video, if you enjoyed this, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that like button. That really does help out my channel, especially with this new channel. I need as many likes and subscribes as I can get so that YouTube sees the channel and begins giving me some position in the listings. Even though I have the top position for most of the other videos on my old channel, I don't have that for this channel. This channel is brand new. YouTube hardly even knows about what this is. So make sure you hit that subscribe and that like, that will really help out getting this channel back up in the listings where it needs to be to keep on showing these here on YouTube. Also, don't forget, I answer comments all day long. I love comments. I love discussions in the comments. If you have any questions or comments, just leave me a comment and I guarantee I'll respond to your comment. That takes care of this video, and I'll have a new one up real soon, and I'll see you next time.